Back on, Ralph. Many churches are taking in Syrian refugees, but Trump has called for a ban on Muslim immigration. What side do you take on that issue? I think that we ought to take a serious look at who's coming in before we decide who comes in. I think I know personally Christians who have had to flee Syria and sure. are staying. In, they're in Lebanon or they're in Jordan. Oh, yeah. I, I uh, have a humanitarian organization that I have good friends that support, and they've had to to get out of there because it's a war zone. On the other hand, um, you've got a lot of Islamic fighters and some really bad people in Syria. So it, it's a very tough issue. And I don't know how, as people are entering, how you're going to be able to tell uh, exactly. the good from the bad. It's going to be difficult. You can't. It's a hard issue. You can't tell what's in somebody's well, head. Actually, we have a pretty thorough vetting process, but, actually. But I mean, it's like... You cannot vet more... the inside of a person's mind. That's right. You can't, but... I mean, they take an extraordinary amount of resources and time to do as much background as they can. Well, if you look at the San Bern cases, right. when you look at the San Bernardino killers, those people though, have been living overnight. The they weren't recently from Syria. No, I mean, those people but have they, been but living they were people But Margaret, they were people who had been radicalized and were communicating with people online, and we didn't know it. Right. But the, so that I don't that think that has to do with immigration. That has no, to I didn't do say it did. with hate speech that happens from people like Donald Trump, who, when he talks well, I don't about know. You how can blame San Bernardino on Donald Trump. I'm I, not I'm sure not blaming that. San Bernardino yeah. on Donald Trump, but, but there, the facts are, exist that when you encourage racism toward the Muslim community in the United States, the backlash is more radicalization. Two, right. yeah. Two things That's I think were... But radicalization mm -hmm. preceded any of First of all, Ralph, sure, I, I agree. I know you know your New Testament. I try to know it a little bit, too. But I don't remember Jesus ever talking about carefully vetting people before you have them come to your table. <laughs> That's not an important concept. <laughs> And it's secondly, reasonable, but it's, 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 I'm not it's saying totally it's unreasonable. Reasonable. Bill's question was about churches and the role of the church in, in doing those things. And the, the, uh, the second point I think that, uh, that needs making always about this stuff is we do have a system in place. You were saying, you were saying as much. We, it's, this is not an emergency in that way. And let's always remember one thing that came up this week. I don't know if everyone saw. It was about uh, polling in 1939 about allowing Jews from Europe into the United States. And mm -hmm. what everybody said, huge majority, was we have to vet these people very carefully because mm -hmm. we don't know if we can trust them or not. And huge numbers were never allowed into this country with the results we know. So we have a good tradition in our country of welcoming, we're, we're letting, of welcoming people we're, we're in. Millions. And a bad tradition of We're, we're letting out. millions of Muslims into our country. We have millions? Muslims. Millions? Yes. yes. We're Absolutely. letting millions? Yes. In? We were talking uh, about you, Syria. Not, we're we have a very, we have a very large Indonesian Muslim community. Yeah. Oh, wait, a very oh, large wait, 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 wait. Indian said, Muslim community. Wait, wait. Syria, you yeah. said we're letting in, in millions. millions. Yeah, right. absolutely. Currently letting in millions. Yeah, they're coming from the Middle East. They're millions? coming from Asia. They're coming I don't from think millions, millions is the correct number, Ralph. Right. I think it is. I don't think not it is. Not annually. I'm not saying annually. But overall, but but yeah, they're absolutely coming but in, and, and no one's being denied entry into the United States today. Well, plenty of people because are of their entry. faith. No one. I, you well, and and they should be. Trying to come. No, nor but should they would be. you be? Yeah, in, nor should, should they, they be. be. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, great. I'm glad we all agree. And by the way, what was going on in 1939 was not but, just I mean, concerns about vetting. It wasn't just that. Right. Everybody knew what was going on in Eastern Europe. Everybody. And, and our government was totally insensitive to what was happening to the Jews. We turned rescue ships away, and it is a black and the mark reason, on this Ralph, country that we're still and having the reason to live down. We, And the reason we did that, you're absolutely right, couldn't agree more, but the reason we did that is because there was a huge majority of Americans who were frightened of outsiders. And FDR thought it was politically essential that he not allow those people in because that and, there and would also, be a revolt against it from the very same, what were they called, America Firsters, whose great-grandchildren are now yeah, let's, but not, you, let's also not forget that in Middle Eastern countries there used to be Jews. Yes. And they were pretty and much, Christians. Pretty much, well, there are still some Christians. Although but, they're but having the a Christian rough time. community in Iraq right. has largely but they, they, fled. They, tragic, they, they pretty tragic. much ethnically tragic. cleansed yes. right. all the Jews and by the out way, of all those Muslim countries. By the so way, let's not it's, pretend. it's the Islamists who are doing that. Of course. Right. They're the ones driving out well, the Jews. They're the ones driving out the Christians. They're the ones who are threatening to execute anybody that doesn't convert to their twisted version of yes. Islam. Let's it's be a, very clear what the, what the enemy is. Okay. okay. Can we expect more price gouging on life-saving medication like the EpiPen? I hope Yes. Not. Well, of course we can <laughs> because no. we, don't, we don't have single payer. <laughs> you know, I come, we did. I come from that horrible, radical, revolutionary country called Canada 
Right, where we had <laughs> socialized medicine and single payer for decades and decades and decades and decades. And it's a weird thing, you know, if you actually come from Canada, if you've lived in Canada, um, liberty is not suppressed. People's right to uh, freedom is in no way Did impeded. your children have to shed blood to yeah. take it back? Oh, totally. <laughs> I see. Totally. I see. And if a child, you know, we How have... How many a, children do you have left from but, the fight? Well, after they take the Canadian government claims one child and All sacrifices right. it in order to pay <laughs> for the socialized medicine. But, you know, the simple truth is I have a, a wonderful nephew who was uh, born incredibly prematurely, bless us, carries not going to be blessedly, and uh, cost hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to care for that child. And his parents had to pay not a single dollar because that was something that we understood as a community responsibility. That's a blessing. It's a blessing. And if I might well, say, it's a Christian blessing. Speaking, and it was always supported speaking, by the churches speaking, in Canada. Speaking as somebody who's A, the son of an MD, and B, was born severely premature mm -hmm. at a time when many who were born, I was born six weeks right. premature, and most people at that time didn't survive right. that. I'm not going to make really... any jokes, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> I say absolutely nothing. All Bill, I can say is you recovered Bill, beautifully. Just be, just... <laughs> you recovered Bill, beautifully, Bill, Ralph. just feel free to be yourself. Don't worry. No, no offense taken. But I, I, I believe very strongly that this, that, that health care and choices about health care is too important to be left to government. And I think that uh, a far better system is to allow the market to work, allow people to choose their own doctor. Ralph, we've and the fact is, there are there there are Canadians who have to come across but, but our Ralph, border. Not, Ralph, Ralph, that is just not true. The market and is I would why also they, say that Ralph, there, let me just finish that's why my point. they jacked up there the cost are, of the EpiPen. I'm not justifying what happened on the EpiPen. But that's but what, what happens I, when what the market. What I am telling you is that because people in the market there want is a more money. reason why most cutting edge pharmaceutical right. Can I make my point? Yes. There's a reason why most cutting-edge pharmaceutical medications are not invented in Canada. But there's a reason why they're invented elsewhere. Ralph, you Because the government fixes the prices. And once you do that, you kill R&D budgets, you kill innovation, and you kill the discoveries that save lives. And when you That's raise the fact. price Ralph, of the EpiPen, you kill the patient. I, I said, Bill, yeah. I... I made it clear. I'm not. I made it abundantly clear. I'm not defending the price gouging, the price gouging that they but did. But the price gouging is essential. I, I believe in medicine. a sunset provision that leads to generic drugs. But you but can't have is, the government it, setting prices and expect people to. to Ralph, do the of life and death. Want. Ralph, all I can tell you is I've lived in Canada, which has a uh, single payer system. I've lived in France, which actually has a complicated private and public system together. And I've lived in the United States. And let me tell you that people in Canada and France are, as a rule, far more satisfied with the way they get medical care and with the security they get. And their freedom is not limited in any way. It's, this should not be a political, this is not a left right issue. This is an issue of common sense and pragmatic evidence. I didn't say it's a left right issue. Right. One more question, because Carrie's going to have her baby. Um, <laughs> Here in the United States, not in Canada. Or was France. the hubbub over Hillary's pneumonia a media creation, or was she being purposely evasive? Well, I think she was being somewhat evasive, but I don't think it's a horrible crime to have a malady and think, you know what? I'm not going to tell anybody because I'll get over it before they even know. It's also, I it's also totally a catch-22 because she's sort of caught in this position where he's, she's saying, they're saying she doesn't have enough stamina. She's a first woman. We don't have in this country right. a Golda Meir, like somebody who was 70 years old right. and became prime minister. Right. Right? Like we don't even forget. We don't even have Margaret Thatcher. I mean, she is the first woman, and right. she is going against all these years. So she does. I mean, you can understand. She was going to. She's tough. She's going to power through. Yeah. Right. Except for then it catches up to no, her. And I, so I, she, I, there, she I, couldn't I, have won could one not, way or the other, but I, her secrecy. I but, could not is the pro was the I could part not that undermined disagree it. more strongly. What as a candidate for president and as somebody who aspires to the highest office of the land, your priority should always be the public's right to know. Yeah. And the minute she was... Should. The minute but this is Donald understand. Trump has Can I finish my black, point? Yeah, finish your the point. The minute she was diagnosed... Don't with, walk into a trap here. This is exactly... The minute she was exactly. diagnosed with pneumonia, she should have had her doctor issue a statement 
she should have come forward and issued a statement. And if she had done that, Bill, it would have been easy. her having the episode that she had at that 9-11 memorial would have never hurt her you know what? politically you nearly know what as bad as it did. You know what I think she should have done? I think she it was should have found... I hear you. I think she should have found a doctor who wrote a letter saying she would be the most healthy <laughs> president in history. Yeah. And then I think she should have gone on like a... I don't know, like a medical daytime talk show and talked about it. I think that's yeah, what well, she so should I have think done. Anybody, okay. I think anybody who can campaign... I, think I also I, love her joke, her joke about like, well, at least finally now Republicans are paying attention to women's health. Yeah. Like, <laughs> my favorite. If I, look, a deeper issue, which we none of us want to look at, is, is there's no real correlation between how healthy a president is and how well they perform. Okay. FDR, let us remember, was in a wheelchair. JFK was seriously ill throughout his presidency. I think, I think Woodrow Ron Wilson would be an exception to that. Woodrow Wilson <laughs> might, be, might be an exception <laughs> to that, although not Mrs. Mike. Wilson... Not Mike. Although Mike. Mrs. Wilson actually did a decent job in... in not elected. In, in, not a good argument. Not a good argument. argument. That, hey, but, Adam, that leads to Bill. <laughs> I'd stay away from that <laughs> message. Not, not the worst or possible Melania result. Yeah. And the, the other, country. How about that? <laughs> and the other thing I think uh -huh. worth saying is that what Hillary has, um, the pneumonia can be cured. What Trump has apparently cannot be. Well... <laughs> <laughs>